Back when the idea for this season series was just beginning to sprout, back when I had decided that this major arc of a truth of the rhythm of the seasons was the right and proper vehicle through which I could communicate with Spencer, back when I began to consider what foundational and priority things I wanted to share with him and do they associate well with the season, winter was the first one I decided on. It was easy. It was a no-brainer. It was a slam dunk. Which is no accidental reference to the sport that has become Spencer's passion and that he is playing during this winter season. I had just been through a season in my own life where the idea of rest had been a sacred echo, and where I spent time considering how to practice it more truly in my life. Rest was a foundational idea and practice that I wanted to share with Spencer, and certainly, yes, rest fit perfectly with the season of winter. Even before I continued on to outline ideas for the other seasons, I began connecting dots in my mind and formulating some rough outline of what I might share about winter and rest. I began to think about the teaching I had heard a couple of years ago during the Lent season about the general rhythm of creation and winter being a time when creation was at rest. I began to think on the idea of hibernation. I made notes to investigate further the truth that hibernation is more than sleep. There is a wholeness to hibernation that goes beyond sleep. Just as I believed rest was more than simply getting more sleep. Winter. The season of rest. Yes, that's perfect. Check that season off the list. In revisiting that initial rough outline in preparation for this season's video, I began to feel increasingly unsettled. Although the truth of an all-powerful and never-tiring God resting after six days of creating the entirety of the world we know, in the truth of a created world that engages by explicit design in a period of hibernation and dormancy are worthy images and truths to share, the singular focus on rest seems somehow not enough. The more I tried to say about rest, the bigger the chamber became that I felt I was standing in the midst of, and the thinner and softer my voice became in trying to project out into that space. I remember thinking the very specific words, there has to be more than just rest. So I stopped. I stopped all the expounding and illustrating and expanding relative to rest, and I went back to the strongest chord at the very beginning of the rope I had been crafting. And when I stopped and looked at it, really looked at it, I found Lent. The roots of my fascination with the seasons, the pure spring source to the idea of rest, they were both birthed during my practice of Lent. What has been one of the major arcs in my life over the past five to seven years? My introduction to and practice of Lent. 
In that moment, Lent came running in from stage right, slid, and stood beside rest. It didn't demand center stage all to itself, but immediately became the enough that I was searching for. It was the wholeness that rightly and properly completed the picture of the winter season. It is during winter that Lent finds its beginning. It is during winter where the darkness that is so central to the practice of Lent finds its boldest and starkest display. It is during winter when one retreats to the interior and has the greatest opportunity to confront what one finds. Like hibernation, where an animal stops living externally by gathering food and instead uses food stored internally to meet its needs, Lent draws you inward. Spencer, it's hard to single things out, and even harder to rank them in some sort of top ten list exercise. What do I feel is absolutely essential to share with you as you journey towards or arrive at manhood? What from my life has any bearing or value in yours? While I am confident that Project 15 is a conscious act of obedience to the Spirit's leading in my role as a father, I have had to rely on God the entire way as to what to do or share. I feel so strongly that Lent is one of those what's to share with you. Lent has been transformative for me, and I could spend hours, maybe days, sharing the story of its practice in my own life. I could tell you about its roots being in a seemingly innocent question from one of the Project 15 brothers, Mr. Dunbar, during a Wednesday morning group meeting. I could tell you that my first experience with Lent was giving up ice cream. I could tell you about when it first hit me that the deep meaning and significance of Lent was something a million miles away from an act of giving up something. I could show you the moleskin notebook that chronicled the deepest, darkest, most meaningful 40-day battle of my life. I could share with you how Lent has transformed Easter for me, how the intentional contrast between a journey through darkness to the bright, brilliant light of resurrection would make it come alive. How the intentional focus on Jesus' last week would so enrich the holiday that had become almost exclusively candy, new Sunday clothes, and egg hunts. How a Friday morning with Mr. Williman sitting on bag chairs, bundled up in a coat and blanket next to the river, watching the sun rise and a couple of men launch a boat, and every hour on the hour reviewing what happened to Jesus as he was dragged from trial to trial on his road to the cross, would forever change Good Friday for me. So many stories. So much significance. Such a strong desire to see this become a practice in your life as a man. But so clear a recognition that your life as a man of God must be your own. There is so much that Project 15 has taught me already. One thing I have been reminded of over and over is that your life as a man must be your own. Your journey through this mythical gate to manhood and then beyond it is and will be uniquely yours. I pause once again towards the end to say that my only intention with this season's series is to invite you into a conversation. The thoughts and stories and pieces of myself that I share with you are only offered in proof that the value of that conversation is eternal. What happens in your life if you choose to wrestle with the truth of rest, and if you ever truly consider the practice of Lent, those possibilities are brought to the altar of fatherhood and sonship and left there. Winter. What a meaningful season it is. Rest. What a meaningful activity it is. Lent. What a meaningful practice that begins today, Ash Wednesday. 
Just as we must travel through Good Friday to get to resurrection, we must travel through the darkness of winter to realize the promise of new life in spring. Don't rush through it. Observe it. Examine it. Speak the truth of it. And rest in it. Hey Spencer, I uh, just wanted to send this video to you, something about rest uh, your dad requested. Uh, Webster's defines rest as freedom from activity or labor, a state of motionless inactivity, peace of mind and spirit. Um, but the word describes it a little bit differently. In Genesis 2-3, then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because he rested on it from all the work he had created and done. In Matthew 11, 28 and 29, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, and I will give you gentleness and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Spencer, I hope as you grow, you'll learn that Obviously, our bodies need rest. And being an athlete, the body needs to regenerate itself. So uh, take heart and learn these lessons well. Um, a good athlete knows when to rest and when to push himself. Uh, take care, buddy. Uh, enjoy uh, the journey. Love you.